Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here for another live feed uh, to chat about travel and all kinds of fun stuff. Appreciate everybody coming in. I know it's it's 8 p.m. in Chicago, and it's a little bit like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., something like that in London, and, and God knows what it's like in Delhi, probably 6 a.m. in Sydney. It's probably in the afternoon or lunchtime or something, so we really appreciate y'all you know, coming up and being high and, and, and being here with us to talk some travel stuff. Um, the summer is coming to an end, and we've had a few trips this summer, and it's been quite good. Um, it was really exciting to see some new places like Rwanda and Tanzania. Excuse me. And then also we had some good times um, throughout Europe. We got to go back down to Georgia and the U.S. We got some fun stuff coming in the fall, going to France and Israel. Uh, we're going to New Mexico. We're going to Georgia a couple times. Um, Georgia and United States. Georgia and the United States. We have those. So we have a bunch of stuff going on. C2K, 2 a.m. in the U.K. Appreciate it, buddy, uh, being there. Hey, Sarah Phelps, good to see you. Pink Pro, Disney Witches, good to see you again. Rampage in Sydney, good to see you, buddy. Juice World, I'll get to questions in a little bit. Hey, everybody in Australia, hopefully I got 11 a.m. in Sydney. I try to give it a time we'd be, like, relatively awake. And now if you're, like, you know, taking an early lunch break, you can watch this, and your boss won't even get upset with you. So that's always a plus. Um, hey, Diana in, in Cancun, good to see you. I'll, hey, hey, BB, good to hear you, buddy. Isles, um, Isle Window, good to see you. Oh, well, we already have a super Hi. chat. Hey, everybody, Jocelyn's here. Um, Forzo Quizlet, we'll get to you in a little bit, buddy. I just want to give talk about a few other things first um, to get people that are that are watching this on replay a few few things we want to kind of talk about today. So we're going to talk about some fall travel stuff. We're going to talk about wrapping up the summer stuff and. And some, you know, ideas for traveling, you know, with your kids during the school year since school's starting up at a lot of places. Uh, so we thought we'd uh, go through some of those things. Um, what would you think would be some good places to take your kids, like, weekend getaways? Like, when they have, like, three or four-day weekends off of school? Because I know a lot of schools will have, like, a Monday off once a month or maybe, like, a parent-teacher conference time. So there's, like, they have a four-day weekend and stuff like that. Do you have any advice? So for us, being in the U.S., we often go to, like, Caribbean destinations, Central America, sometimes South America, but um, usually on the northern end of South America just because you can get there pretty quickly and you can see, like, a whole new culture and expose your kids to a whole lot of really great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helpful. Yeah. Um, and how about you comment on a quick quick getaways in Europe? I mean, yeah. although there's there there's a myriad of them, right? Yeah. So. I think if you're coming from the U.S., if you're on the East Coast, if you if you can fly out of Boston, New York, you have really relatively quick trips to places like Iceland, to Ireland, Scotland, England. Those are pretty easy. Lisbon and Portugal as well. So you can still do a decent like long weekend on those with your kids. Because, um, you know, you'll fly out in the evening, so, you you know, they don't even have to skip school. You take them, you know, if it's there off Thursday, Friday, you can fly out Wednesday night on those Wednesday night flights. Get in and have Thursday all day, Friday all day, Saturday all day. Then Sunday, you come back and you get home on Sunday, too, at a relatively decent hour. If you're on the East Coast, even if you're in the Midwest, it's not too bad. Now, if you're on the West Coast, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's definitely doable. That's why when we usually do our, our weekend getaways, we will, like... I, I just booked a trip to El Salvador, so we're going there for one of our five, kids have a five day weekend in the winter, and we're like, um, I want to go someplace warm. <laughs> I want someplace yeah, at the beach, someplace you know, we haven't been yet, so we're heading to El Salvador for that, and and so we try to look at things like that. You know, uh, we're looking at maybe going to the Key West and stuff, and and all kinds of different things. Anyway, so I want to kind of talk with that to get started off with. Um, We've already got a gazillion questions. So we got a gazillion Stop. questions. Sorry, so we'll do that. <laughs> Hush your mouth. Um, so. Forbo Quizlet. Quizlet. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. So what if you're playing on Mallorca? Maybe dropped me off in the Palma 30 years ago. I hope you got off eventually. I know it's a party animal island, so you have that. Spent, spent a week alone waiting on a ship. You didn't get the opportunity. Here. You waste the opportunity. Mallorca is a, is, a, is a fun place. When I used to live in Germany, they called it the Siebzehnte Bundesland. So the 17th German state, because so many German tourists go there and, and, and stuff like still that. True. So <laughs> Still true. It's kind of tough sometimes to get a real Spanish uh, Mallorca feel when you're there. That's one thing you should know, but it is totally developed for tourists, so there's a lot of good um, good sites there. If you want to actually talk about them. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, Jazz Heel Sit 2, thank you for the super chat. Uh, we don't talk about uh, polit political things on here. <laughs> I think that would be a topic that we would go off topic if we got onto that one. Yeah. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, so, so I'm going to move on from that one. 
Um, so all these people saying, hey, Jeffrey Bloom, good to see you on here again. Eddie uh, from Bill, Texas, hi. thank you. Bill Parker, good to see you back. Mark Doris Diana, in Iowa, hey. good to see you. Quince in Serbia, good to see you. Good to have you back. Toronto people in the house, nice to see. North Carolina, got people from all over. Um, <laughs> Lynn Novak, thank you very much, Lynn. Thank That's you, really Lynn. nice for the super <laughs> chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, we, we really do. Um, Hi, Dominic. Do oh, Dom's on here. Oh, hey, yeah, Dominic. Good to see you, buddy. More North Carolina. There's a lot of North Carolina <laughs> I know, here. Lot. So, Kane Smith writes Going on a cruise in October, stops and excursions are in Mexico. Do we need to worry about currency conversions at all? If you're in places like Cabo or Cancun, no. They'll, and, they'll take And Chances are where you're going, you don't have to worry about it. You'll yeah. be in easy peasy places. Yeah, so you should right. be okay. Um, <laughs> some random guy. To go to a secluded beach up here in Minnesota. <laughs> so Jocelyn used to spend her summers in Minnesota back in the day. Yeah, on the Knife River. Um, so we were in two harbors, mostly Knife River in that area. So way north. Yep, good times. So yeah. anyway. Let's see. All right. Um, is mid-March a, a good time to visit D.C.? Well, you'll just probably be yeah. missing the cherry blossoms. They're, they'll be just a bit later than that. Yeah. yeah. If you, go, um, if you go check out our buddy Rob at Trip Hacks DC, he's got, like, for every month, he'll tell you what you should do, stuff like that. He does his guided tours, too, he and he's is, an awesome dude. He is really a wealth of information. Check him out. Yeah. Jacinta, thank you. Or Jacinta, I, whichever way you pronounce it. Thank you for the super chat. Um, hi, Mark. Best places, towns to stay for three days in Amsterdam and Copenhagen for a 30-year-old couple. So, I would say what we really enjoyed, we really enjoyed staying in Utrecht and... and um, in we Harlem? Stayed in Harlem, but I liked Utrecht better. Yeah, because you... It, it almost, if you hadn't already stayed in Amsterdam, um, you would almost think that you were in Amsterdam because... But with, without the canals, any international tourists. Right, no, very few tourists, but you you still have the canals and things. I mean, you have the canals too in Harlem, yeah. but it, because it's a, a, a larger city, it, it felt more that way. Yeah. But it's an easy, what, 20-minute train ride into Amsterdam to go to the Reeks to um, go to Van Gogh's museum, you know, all that kind of stuff. So those would be my um, suggestions. So okay. <laughs> just we just had that thing where it jumps up 90, <laughs> 90 posts. Let's try to get some stuff on there. Mark Doris, Mark, love your Costa Rica videos. Yeah. Want to check it out next year, maybe move there. Cool. Cool. <laughs> um, it's not it's not as cheap as it used to be to live there, just so you know, but it is still pretty cool. Hello, J.U. in the Dominican Republic. Hope we'll get there. Some random guy, yeah, we're going to try to get to Glacier National Park, too. we got a lot of, um, lot of hopefuls in the future. Geodude, have you been to Bruges? We were just in Bruges this summer. Yeah, so... There we'll... will be some videos out, um, hopefully, before you get there in October. Mm-hmm. So we'll have that. Okay. Hey, hey Mississippi. Mississippi. See, we woke up that <laughs> Potty one. Potty Look at all these Australians. Now they got a time that's not, like, early, early morning for you. It's great. Hey, Jason, good to see you on there. Yeah, I know Island Window. Yes, I know, Brent, you want us to go to Key West. We'll probably go there, too. Um, in on Fleur, have you been to either? I've not been to either of those places. Abundant Life Journey. Have you been to either? On Fleur is really gorgeous. Yeah. Like, it's a small town right on... It, like, we were on this side of Normandy. It's on the other side of Normandy. Yeah, I just... Um, I haven't been to either, so... If you had to pick one or the other, I would go to Hon on Fleur. If I was... Okay. If, I, if I had to make a choice. Okay. Um, Ronaldo, Ru Ronaldo Ruiz, I'm glad we'll be welcome in El Salvador. And we're excited Thanks. to get there. We've had friends who have gone there and yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Um, there's some good stuff there. Hey, it's okay if you're three months late. <laughs> it's all it's all good. We're I not always late. I was late, straight. too. Jen, I'm always late. Yeah, Jen, her hair is very nice. Oh, thank you, Jen. Much appreciated. Hey, in L.A., in Ohio, Virginia Beach, Minnesota. Hey, how about oh, that one? Well, she's 77. How do you guys stay so happy in marriage? We have a good sense of humor. That's right. And we also realize that sometimes... What? I don't know. Sometimes what, Mark? Sometimes mm. I should sleep in the kids' room and <laughs> snore there. But I don't snore the same team. It's not like a me versus her kind of thing. It's us versus them, meaning the kids. <laughs> so you're having that kind of common yes. enemy is one of those things. Yeah. Um, Josh Parks, hey, thanks, man, for the super chat. Appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. Come back to Kansas City. I, we will. That was a fantastic trip. My mom's going there again uh, this fall. She wants me to go with her, but I think we have too much stuff going on. But I still have Kansas City, more Kansas City videos to put out. I got a don'ts and a, and a shock. Um, hey, we're looking at South Korea maybe after Christmas. Yeah, so we've done China and Japan, um, or we've, we've visit, done them. We've done we visited them. We've, them. Visited we've them. been to them. 
um, and there's so much more to see, and we're getting there. The problem is, like, for certain parts, especially like Southeast Asia, um, when we have a lot of time to get there, it's really bad weather, so we're kind of trying, so not this Christmas break or winter break, but the next. We have a longer break, so we may be able to kind of hit some of that up and, and make good time. So, Hey, Dominic, your your Poland trip, that you can do that in two weeks, no problem, my friend. Oh, yeah, Nick Peterson's talking about Leiden. He said Leiden, Netherlands, for another place to stay outside of Amsterdam. That's also a good call. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Um, let's see, mid-March, we already got that one taken care of. Wait, I feel like we missed something. I don't know, but you're making it zoom by again. Well, it's not me. That does it itself. Uh, Jazzles hit too. What's to do in El Salvador? You actually have some really, there's a couple still colonial towns you can go see. There has some colonial architecture. You got some really good beaches, practice some surfing, stuff like that. There's a few mine and ruins you can go see there as well. So that's kind of a cool thing. So that's what we're probably going to do. We only have, I think we only have, well, we're going to have five days. So we can't do a lot of stuff. Excuse me, but we'll do as much as we can to get some, some good stuff out there because it's another. This Thomas Higgins. Taking my mom in her 50s to Europe in May. She's never been. We're doing a one week in Italy and a one week in Ireland. Would you scratch a couple of days and visit a third location? Switzerland, Krakow, etc. No. No. I wouldn't. <laughs> I think with... Oh, you want to do that one? Or well, no? you know, a week in each of those um, countries is going to be very full. Um, and you can see a whole lot of stuff. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut out any days. Um because you're going to get some really rich stuff. And also because those two places are sort of far apart and you've got a travel day in between, I think you're actually making the best use of your time there. Yeah, and I, I agree with Jazz 100% because what happens... Of course you do. Of course I do. Again, why we are always so happy <laughs> being married. She's always right and I'm always good looking. So That's the key. <laughs> That's right. The truth will always set you free. Jacob Perez, hey, thanks for the super chat, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, I would also add like... Anytime you're going to travel with your parents, and, and if anyone's getting tired, it doesn't work that way, Ben. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. sorry. Um, it, you have to realize this, it, you're going to need more time. And, and people want to do their own thing. So having a week in each destination is a good thing because then you can see what you want to see and take her and see those things. And then she can go with you the things you want to see. But also each of you can have a day free to do your own thing as well. Absolutely. So, and even if your so mother's never that. been... Um, both of those places are, you know, relatively safe and you can yeah. drop her off in, in a certain place. And as long as you're following decent um, safety stuff, everybody should be fine. So, Susan Robbins, Galapagos Islands will be fun. Galapagos Islands will be fun. We've been to Ecuador, but it was just, it, that was out of our price range. We just couldn't yep. afford, we couldn't afford However, doing that. However, we got a really wonderful tour of Ecuador and we got to see a lot of really amazing stuff. So, I felt like it was a really deep um, trip. Yeah. Hey, Candy, 1230. So, it says, hi, Mark. Which building in London and Paris can I take pictures of? I know a picture of the Eiffel Tower during the night is illegal. Okay. First up, the illegal part of that is not that. Uh, that's one of those things like because it's an artist installation, if you're photographing that, you're not supposed to be able to monetize, like sell the pictures of the, but the if thing it's happening. For your own thing yeah. and it's your private picture. You can that's do it. Okay. Yeah, it's not like they're gonna come and, and search your computer for it. So like when unless you're like trying to make a calendar and try to sell the picture that way, you might have something um, there. External motive. I can't get the first part of that. Going to Rome next year for a honeymoon, but it's Congrats. in June. Yes, congratulations. Uh, too hot or no, and is six days enough time? Um, no. It'll be warm, but yeah, you'll but it's be fine. It's, it, it, and it's, the thing is, However, the hot if it was Rome, like this summer, then it might yeah. be dang hot. But it's, I don't know why you keep doing I don't it. know it because I think I can't. Okay, so anyway, um, it, six days for just Rome, probably enough. And you might be yeah. able to get out and see a couple other things. Actually, the first time Mark and I went to Rome, we did it in 24 hours. I had shin splints well, and it was, was really first time. crazy. I've been there a few times. Well, yeah, whatever. The first time we went. Sorry. See, I'm always right. <laughs> anyway, um, Gringo Travel Guides, thank you for the super chat. Uh, heading to Japan in November for the first time. Any specific must-see sites or attractions that aren't on all the generic top 10 lists? I would say one of the things people mess up when they go to Japan is they get so kind of well one Locked down and doing the top ten sites. Well, not well. The thing is, they're top ten to for a reason. Them. You have to see you them. You have to see them. But I think one of the things is in Japan, it's it's actually kind of difficult 
to meet locals and stuff like that. So I think one of the things that a lot of people miss is they don't realize that you'll bump into people that want to practice English. And it might be somebody that's 75 years old and they just want to practice a little bit. Like we bump to people in train stations, on trains, different places. They just want to, they, they've been practicing it. They're like, this is my chance. And they'll spend like five to 10 minutes talking to you. And for them, it's a huge, great experience to practice their English. And for you, it's a chance to actually talk to some locals. So I would say don't, don't pass up that chance. I that, was going to say the same no. thing. Well, I don't know about the English part, but it isn't terribly easy. Um, so if you do start talking to a local, spend the time with them and, and really enjoy that time. What are you doing, child? I'm trying to make it so your not, head's not cut off. Oh, well, you know, what's wrong with my head being cut off? Uh, because it looks It was good enough silly. for Marie. Anyway, child. yes, well, she's dead. <laughs> So hold on, pick a couple questions. I gotta because our our okay. the feed over here for us is freezing up a lot. So and and Jocelyn I keep keeps trying to scroll back. She keeps okay. doing this on the screen. I'm like, stop doing it. Pick um, a question. Kate asked, best time to go to Greece. So for me, it's September, partially because the figs are in season. Um, but I really love. Is it going or what's going on right there? Uh, just are you having keep, an issue. Just keep talking. Okay. So anyway, um, September is definitely like low tourist time. You don't have very many people from anywhere there, um, but things are still open. So oftentimes if you go later in the year, you're not going to have like a lot of restaurants and things won't be open, um, especially in smaller towns and stuff. So um, if you go like, and then Easter, like around Greek Easter would be an incredible cultural time to see the country however prices are usually pretty expensive to go at that time of the year whereas in september they're, they're a lot less jl just landed in toronto from munich and berlin our daughter's traditional bavarian wedding wow, awesome cool. that is so cool man congratulations i'm glad you had a good time and i'm glad our tips could help out that's really cool um next up let's see david vilch any recommendations for the netherlands going for eight days next month i'm contemplating going to delft the Hague and Leiden, any other places in mind? Like we always say, Utrecht and Harlem would be two ones I'd, I'd throw in to go check out. Absolutely. Um, Leipzig, if you can go there and see the the like the Stasi Museum, um, it's kind of interesting. There's a Stasi or the, the Secret Police Museum there. It's it's kind of interesting that? to go there. Okay. Not, yeah, it's not the Stasi Museum. It's the, oh, the Secret German. Police during, yeah, that's but, Leipzig's in Germany. Yeah. Oh, you were yeah. talking about Germany. I thought we were talking about the Netherlands. No, I was talking about Leipzig. Oh, I Another question. Listening. Michael Mann, hey buddy. Hi, Mark Hi, and Michael. Jocelyn. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Early planning for Portugal and Southern Spain. Nice. We're the side trip to Tangiers, probably looking at 10 days total. With only 10 days, I would say no. It is not worth doing it. Um, there's better places to go over there, and Tangiers, is, it, you're just going to get overrun, and it won't, it, it, you, it won't be a It's also going to take a lot of time away from yeah. the other two things. Um because the rest of the country to see down there is well worth seeing, and Tangiers wouldn't even be in the top ten. And there's just to see. so much. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff to see. Yeah. So One Direction Forever. Uh, we were actually looking at. We were pricing out South Korea tickets yesterday, so it's 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 in our head. <laughs> As I read off with her head. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you guys are having lagging times, but we're having a lagging time with with the with the uh, questions and stuff here. So I apologize. I'm going to guess Caleb's maybe on YouTube or something like that. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, let's see. Thomas Ringel, when will we be going to Morelia, Mexico, my home? I don't know. We will always love getting back to Mexico. At least I'm having a little Bohemia. We were eating some paletas earlier today. So, um, MG, taking a trip to Paris, what should I do for cheap housing? Well, if you're not um, averse to it, there, there are plenty of hostels and things. We typically end up renting apartments. Actually, I think we've stayed in a hotel twice in Paris. We typically just always do the apartments. And Sometimes they're not super cheap, but they're always, almost always, especially if it's more than one person, less expensive um, than most hotels. Um, and it makes the rest of your trip, your trip cheaper because you can go, you know, to the to the markets and things like that and um, make dinner and, and things like, you know, whatever. It just cuts out the cost. I know I'm rambling. Yes. C2K. I was laughing at C2K. What are you doing, child? Oh, my God. I just heard my wife tell him off my mark. Yes. I'm glad I can bring back your family. What happened? Nothing. You don't worry about it, honey. Bless your heart. So Dominic Gray going to Germany and Sweden next week. Two wheel upright, a bad idea. Is, is two wheel upright a bike? What? Two wheel upright? I don't. I don't know. Dominic, oh, is one of those. Is that one of those? The two things bike, that you stand on. Two wheels. 
and you stand up on it? I have, I have no idea. I don't know what that means, Dominic. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. But thank you for the super chat. I, I put a little thing down below and we can help out. Hey, Olga, we're going this fall to, to Israel. Um, Philip, thank you very much for the super chat. First time in Barcelona. Four nights next weekend. Nice. You're going to have a good time. Should I do a day trip or just explore the city for four days? What are some less touristy things to do? I would just stay the four days there because there's not a ton of really... Uh, there's some day trips from there, but like not the really huge famous ones. You're probably best off enjoying the city. I would say one thing I always tell people is go to the El Boron district and go drink the cava. That's the, the bubbly Spanish wine and eat the pinchos because there's you tapas and stuff like that. Yummy. Pinchos are, is, is, a, is the Barcelona yeah. version of tapas kind of stuff. It's just bread with the different toppings on top. You have a really good time. Yes. Silvia Elena Arce Rojas. Thank you very much. Gracias. Estoy feliz que estás aquí con nosotros. Uh, tal vez podemos vernos en México la próxima vez cuando vamos por allá. Let's see. Next up, the lots of reviewed messages. Somebody Eric, yeah, has asked this twice. What's the best way to move around Switzerland? Is Swiss Pass? Oh, or... I would I would just either buy the tickets or use the Swiss Pass. Um, that would be your best bet. Yeah. Don't don't drive because it's so beautiful with the mountains there and stuff that you'll be looking too much and get a little dangerous. And also with all the switchbacks, your tummy might not um, like it. In, another Switzerland question. Um, in October, I only have time for either Zermatt or Lauterbrunn. Uh, for a day, which one should I choose? My mother loves Zermatt, Zermatt like yeah. nobody's business. Because um, that was more famous. I mean, you have a little more stuff to do, like touristy infrastructure stuff. I mean, you can't go wrong with either one, but if you only can choose one, I'd probably do Zermatt. Um, Rachel S., are trains the best transportation in Great Britain? No, I would rent a car. Uh, getting around Scotland, Wales, England, and if you go over the, the Ireland, Northern Ireland. It's expensive, too. Actually, yeah, trains are us, stupid expensive. Yeah. Actually, for us, for a family of four, it was significantly less to rent a um, a car and just bebop around to wherever we chose to go. And also, I find that both, um, all, actually, all of the UK, It's it, whether you're in Ireland or you're in Northern Ireland or you're Scotland, Wales, uh, England, it's easy to get around by car and kind of get lost and see some really wonderful off the beaten path things that you didn't expect to see. Yeah. Thomas, I already said, I don't know when we're going to get to Morelia, but we'll get there one day. Don't you worry. Um, let's see. Some more stuff. Uh, yeah. So grab a controller too. Is there a schedule that you follow when you do these live chats? Oh. Not, not, so, <laughs> not so much. No, not um, at all. Because we, because we're getting ready, the kids go back to school next week, so we've been doing all those things. And I just got back from Scotland this weekend, so it was kind of like, well, we could get the kids' stuff all together. We could try to get things and have some time with them before they go back, or I can sit in my office for three hours editing a video together. And so it's like, hey, our kids want out. And the, kid, the kids want out. So will. No they always will. Yeah. So it's like, let's just do a live feed because we haven't done one for a little while, and, I, and I, we it. actually enjoy doing these. Which is like, I know some, I've listened to some some. YouTubers and they'll do like live feeds. What's more like, okay, we're doing a live feed because you wanted it. I'm like, no, we're doing it because it's fun and and I really I like, like talking to people. Interaction people. with you guys. And, and I don't. Even I, if I don't. It is by text. Some of you over here, I feel like I know you and like we've chatted so many times. You're like, hey, what's up? Good to see you again. Like Olga has been commenting for I don't know for years. a long years now. It seems like and it's like us. Oh, I feel like I know her and so it's it's kind of an interesting thing thing for that. Simon, Simon Templar. Um, we have been to the east coast of Canada, but just. Just not the three places, the two places that you mentioned. <laughs> um, and I bet it's amazing in fall because I've done, you know, the northeast of the U.S. and it's incredible in the fall. Love it. Absolutely. So Josh Griffiths, so I was saying Newcastle, England could be a nice place to go. So Jocelyn's looking to go on a girl's trip up that way. Um, yeah, my girlfriends and I are talking about doing, I know it's crazy, but the Lake District and then going down to Bath for... Um, the the Jane Austen festival. I actually was looking at silly dresses. You go right ahead, babe. Okay. Have I fun. Love you. So Tyler, <laughs> cool guy. Mark and Jocelyn, do you avoid flying on American Airlines since they had some mechanical issues this summer? Um, we actually don't really fly American at all because we enjoy Delta right now. We, that's what we fly with pretty much exclusively. Um, but what I tell people is anytime you have an airline you enjoy, you know, and, and there's no problem, keep going with it, get status with them if you can. Um, but realize that sometimes just because you have, you have status or something like that, it might not always be the best to go with the same airline all the time because if it's going to be $700 more for that ticket, sometimes you got to make a choice. Uh, yeah. I mean, nine times out of 10, we're going to go with, you know, our particular airline, but if it's really expensive, we don't. 
Yeah, because sometimes you can't be. I mean, if it's if it's you know like uh, when we were in Europe, I I went from Krakow to Rome, and the only choice I like the only direct. You okay, Liam? Yeah. All right, did you drop something? No, I didn't. Uh, did you serve a thunk? Um, but no, I, I looked like, yeah, I could try to go with KLM or Air France, which are like connector flights or check air. I'm like, why do I want to have a connector, spend seven hours getting to a place that's only an hour and a half flight, and, and it's one third the price. So, you know, you got to be smart with the, the planes you choose. So, uh, oh my Jesus, are Paris and Vienna good choices, a good combination? Yes, they are. It's very much going to be a very cultural trip, so you'll be okay there. Um, recommend a portable phone charger. Um, uh, we have... A few different ones. I have a my charge. I have um, what else? I have so many. I don't. I don't even know. There was that new one. It's black and silver. Yeah. I oh, there, the then there was Brookstone. I like theirs. Theirs like the look cool, one. and it had the cords. Thing is, if you get ones that already have the cords in it, it makes life a little bit easier because you don't have to carry your long cord around. You can just plug it right in. But just make sure they have they have that. Juan Gomez, Ireland with kids seven and eleven. Good or bad idea? Excellent idea. Actually, I'm really sad because we were planning on going to. I uh, have a family road trip in Ireland this October. Uh, well, it's not really sad because we're going to France. It's sad because we have a friend having a birthday, and so it's a cool reason. But I was like, I really want to do our Ireland road trip because it's a great family experience because you get they can get out and explore and run and stuff like that. So that's really kind of a cool thing. So you did that. So Olga, where are you going to Israel? By the way, are you going to Petra Wadi Rum or um, I don't know that I'm ever saying that correctly. We'll get to Petra for sure. Amman in Jordan, definitely to Petra. Um, Israel, as much as we can possibly see, um, you know, we haven't we haven't finished all of those plans. So we can't tell you really exactly what what we're at. Oh, so oh, dang it! So it's it's jumping on me again. And I, someone was just saying they're from hi from Southern California. Hi, there's someone from Southern California. I think I don't know. I, I can't remember what the name was. It just disappeared. Uh, she's going to Southern California. And she she's from Southern California, and she's going to Rome. I think with her mom. Yeah, Rome and Paris in two weeks. My question for Jocelyn, mm -hmm. can you recommend, recommend a good anti-theft purse? I don't carry an anti-theft purse. Hello, every pickpocket in the world just heard me. <laughs> um, I, I just carry one that I feel really comfortable with on my shoulder that I can kind of hold on to. Also, I know PackSafe makes some really good ones that have like, you know, where you can't slash the the strap and things like that. Um, I'm sorry, I suck. I think... With I think um, I think anytime when you're looking at anti theft stuff, a lot of it comes down to you making sure you pick stuff that is not easily entered into or taken or taken off of you. So that's why some of these things are like, oh, the the vest that has 19 pockets inside, but that's super and uncomfortable. How is that? And, and, and when you wear the the the, the, ger the the German brown vest, you're like tourist. Yeah. So you want to be careful with that. So just, just wear something that you're comfortable with that zips closed for Pete's sake. Don't have anything that's open. Um, you know, and like I like things that are shoulder strap that I can hold on to also or that are crossbody. So yeah. that's my thing. So Josh Parks. Hey, buddy. Good to see you back. How difficult is it to adapt to driving on the left side of the road? Driving in the UK scares me. I actually addressed this in a future um Mistakes, video mistakes of Scotland. I just filmed it like three days ago in Scotland. Okay, so get off my <laughs> back, woman. Jeez. Um, for me, it's just like after you get after you get through the first roundabout, it just gets a lot easier. After the first day, you're fine. You it understand? truly, it's all. The only thing that I really ever have trouble with is that I look for my rear view mirror to my right, and it's to your left. And I also try to put my seatbelt on the wrong way but truly the driving part is pretty easy when you're making right hand turns it's like making a left hand turn so every time you've got to make a right hand turn just take a minute and not a minute but you know take a breath and think about it before you do and it. i recommend get, getting a gps don't use your phone use a gps right? absolutely sylvia gracias de nuevo y nos vemos en mexico <laughs> thank you for the super chat there hey, um, um Eric, it was a while ago so i just go ahead the, the only time this person had to go to Greece was December, January. So my advice for that is um, maybe more mainland stuff. Or if you're going to the islands, Crete um, would be a good place to go because it's constantly moving. And it's like like Erakleon and Hanya have more stuff in their cities of their own. But like Santorini, you've been there in, in the I've been winter, there in February. And it was nothing. my mom, my dad, 
myself and, and the donkeys. donkeys. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there was nobody there. So, and, so maybe stick to mainland, and there's so much to see. You're not missing anything mm-hmm. by staying on the mainland. And then also, oh, yeah. like, Crete is good because they've got a couple big cities. Yeah, and it's, and it's a big enough place that there's stuff, and there's stuff right. you can do that's not based just on tourism. Right. Eric Brown, thank you very much for the Super Chat. Looking for good European cities to visit in December and January. That's not too cold. So if it's before Christmas, I recommend Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, because they have a lot of really good Christmas markets. And regardless if you believe or not believe in Christmas, you will enjoy your time when you're there. Um, and when you get into January... Yeah, too cold. Yeah, well, yeah. To but, me, that's too cold. Well, the thing is, it doesn't... And I still do it because it's awesome. Yes, it's not that, that, that cold. It's fine. You're from the South. So, it's above so, freezing. Yes, it's above freezing. It's wet, but whatever. Um, I think <laughs> January is some good places to go. You can, if you go to January, after like the 5th or 6th of January, if you go to Italy, Southern Italy, because Northern Italy is cold. If you go to Southern Italy, like Rome and stuff, very few tourists there because no one's going. Like after the winter holidays, people are back in school. It opens up and prices drop a lot. Same thing in the South of Spain. But you're never you're not going to get a place that's hot. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So don't, don't – I mean, I know you asked for not too, too cold. But, um, yeah, I would probably do an Italy one and after you enjoy the Christmas kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. Benjamin, Mark and Jocelyn, I have been watching your videos forever. Thank you. I caught a pickpocket trying to reach into my bag. I watched your video before I went and was on the lookout. I'm glad you caught him. Sadly, yeah, a lot of people aren't scary, as lucky right? to catch him. But you're like, what the hell are you doing? And you're not sure what to do because we've had fans that have written us. Um, this one couple, they were in Barcelona, and they wrote me about how the guy like the guy caught the dude with his hand in his pocket. And the guy, like, he took a cigar and put it out on the guy's arm. <laughs> and the cops wanted to arrest him for doing that. Like, the guy was trying to rob me. And they're like, because... Like in, in a lot of in Spain, at Some least in Barcelona, places. it's like the cops are in on it, which is just horrible. I mean, I'm sure, I hope they're, they're not. not. They're not, but it's they just, just don't. They just don't care. care. Like that's the thing is, like in the U.S., like the cops are like, "Oh, I'm going after them," and they're they're like, ah, "You got robbed, stupid tourist." I'm like, yeah. "Why are you paying money for that?" Kind so there's of stuff? two here I want to answer. Um, yes, Marco J. Yes, we've been to Africa. We have been to Morocco, and this summer we had a wonderful time in Tanzania and Rwanda. Oh my gosh. Rhonda's got Plenty. my heart. Yeah. Absolutely. We already have, it. there's videos online if you go to youtube.com slash yep. Walter's Rule. You'll find more. Uh, Yannery Ventura. I'm spending 10 days in Lisbon in mid-December. Recommendations for day trips or things to do that are off the beaten path? We got them. Um, go to the zoo. That's my favorite thing. Tourists don't really go to the zoo, but it's honest to God, it's one of the best zoos that we have ever been to. Um, I just really enjoy it. Um, go When you go down to like the Oceanarium and that whole... Who's coming in? Hang on. You go back with that. Who's outside playing? So, yeah, she just didn't know the kid was outside playing. So, anyway. So, I'm going to go through and say some high stuff real quick. Hey, Olivia, Oliver, May, good to see you. Um, we, I have not been to Castlebet in Italy, sadly. Um, we'll be back to Galway. Don't worry, Chuck. We'll take the kids there, too. Silk Road Journeys. Um, probably about three years out, we're going to do something like that. So, we got some stuff coming up. Um... Yeah, my, Michelle Scott, I know. I can't wait to get to Petra. It looks amazing. Um, name is a Lysenok. <laughs> um, thank you for the super chat. If planning a first trip to Germany, what city area would be best for a week or so? Um, if, if you're just going to stay in one area, so you're going to do a lot of traveling, I would go to Bavaria. Base yourself out of Munich. You can do day trips. Or what you can do is kind of split it up. But from Munich, you can get a day trip to Salzburg in Austria, so you get another country. You can go to Nur- Regensburg for a day trip. You go to Nuremberg. You've got just all the stuff in Munich. You've got Oberammergau. You've got Neuschwanstein Castle and Fuss in the town that it's at. So you've got a lot of options there. So I hope this can name help you out. Name is Allison, okay? Oh, name is Allison, okay. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's better than the Mike Hunt last time. So Scott Reza Jafarian, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Uh, let's see. Benjamin23, also saying thank you for the super chat. Um... And Benjamin has a good question. Is it easy to use a CPAP in a hostel dorm bedroom? So the plugs, I actually have a dunce of hostels uh, with one of my former students. And he actually has a bunch of videos on hostel stays. And a lot of them will have um, like the USB plugs you can plug in, but that's not going to help you with your CPAP. Um, it can't like make sure you get the bed that's going to be near a plug. So when you book your room, book your place, make sure you let them know. So you, so you can get that. Otherwise, you might want to spend spend up a little bit and get the uh, like private room so you're guaranteed a plug. One thing I would say is uh, European hotels, 
Um, it, there's a lot less plugs, so if you need a plug, make sure you have that. Make sure that your CPAP machine will work um, with the plugs and stuff like that. I know a lot of them do, but I would check with the manufacturer's stuff for that. Deborah, I think that an older woman traveling alone in London is fine. Um, you know, there are pickpockets and those kind of things everywhere, but... You'll be fine. Uh, you'll be fine, yeah. Um, Oliver, no, I have not been to Casablet. I thought I answered that one. So. Casablanca? No, Casablet. No, oh. voice. Um... Oh, okay. Isn't Corfu a good Greek island? Yeah, Corfu is a good one to check it out. It is, but um, it's like not in in the winter. Thanks, Scott. I'm glad I did. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so, rooms and how? What is the best way to travel as a disabled person? One of the things we only have a couple of videos on this, and I actually was talking to my mom's friend who specializes in disabled travels because her son got some disabilities and so she's been doing all kinds to try to promote that so we're hopefully going to get together this fall and put together a video or two to help people with disabilities travel um but one of the things i would say is there's always not always but a lot of countries have organizations that are help for tourists with disabilities and i would look up like germany disability travel and you will find some out there that can help out much better than i can also i was just reading um an article about pittsburgh airport having put in a sensory room for for oh, what everybody is your list of all i have stuff? a list i don't know where the list is because we cleaned the kitchen <laughs> but i do remember a few places so pittsburgh um mco that's orlando atlanta phoenix um I feel like you had one in wales that was supposed to there was one in wales there are several in canada and all of them have special things um, for people with special needs. And <clears throat> some of them, I thought it was amazing, they had um, adult changing tables. Because it's not something like, you know, we have some friends who have a 17-year-old son who um, is is confined to a wheelchair. And how do you change a diaper um, in, in that kind of, you can't put them on a normal thing. And it's not something that people talk about, but it's something yeah. that people really need. Um, and it's starting to become more prevalent and I'm really happy about that. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of different websites out there. Um, so just Google the things that you specifically need, um, and see what you can find. Yes, Joey, it is. You were asking about the shirt. Um, Jeffrey Bloom for Oktoberfest is later hosts and touristy or fun? It's fun. Realize <laughs> if you're wearing later hosts in there, people are going to want to take their pictures with you. If you are not German at all. They will totally want to take pictures with you. So don't think of it as a traditional thing. Think of it as a fun thing, okay? So you have that. Let's see. Okay. Want to pick one? Okay. Uh, I wasn't reading. Okay. I'll go with this one. Um, Jeff A., I recently returned from a trip in one week in Italy, one week in Egypt, two days in Athens, two days in London. The only time we were worried about pickpocket was in Pompeii, and they were so obvious. Sometimes when you have a lot of tourist stuff, the, they, the most obvious ones are the ones that actually get people because they think, oh, it's so obvious. And then you get nailed without even thinking. You're like, oh, man. So so it is funny how sometimes that does happen. Hey, Train in Wisconsin. Good to see you. David Konachek. No, we have not. Hey, buddy. Uh, we have not been to India, but we're looking at maybe going next summer. So there's something there. Um well, I see him. I'm going to Turkey this summer. Any tips what to do on a plane? We actually have a video on how to survive long-haul flights. I would go look it up there. It's um, just put a long haul flights, Walter's World. It'll pop up on YouTube, no problem. JL, best time to hit um, the Amalfi Coast. So um, I would say for me, it's spring. I really enjoyed yeah. the spring, and there weren't tons of tourists. There were some, but it wasn't massively overrun like it gets in the summer. Um, on the other hand, fall might be a good time to do that too because there would be less people there, but still a lot of stuff going on. Um, actually, we were there at Easter, and it was amazing. Bells ringing all day on Sunday morning, yeah, and it, was, it cool. was just really incredible. So, Rare Repair, Fritz, thank you. He says you both look good. Thanks. No one, no one ever tells me that. <laughs> they might, well, they tell me, not her, so I'm glad, you know, now you feel better. They see you look good. Anyway, um, moving on. Any tips on Mississippi? So Natchez, Mississippi, one of the cutest towns in the U.S. It's kind of off the beaten path to get there, but well worth it. There's some some really great, great houses. And Curdio 80, no, you're not going to get me this time. You're not going to get me this time. So there's that. Uh, Craig Chambers, Great Britain this fall. was. I like going there in the fall because um, there's very few tourists. And, I mean, you don't go there for, like, sunny weather anyway. 
So it's not really a big deal if it does rain because you're prepared for that? Thomas Rangel, we haven't really had any troubles in London. Um, I don't I don't know. I mean, you've spent a lot of time in London. He used to date an <clears throat> English girl who lived there, and one of our very dear friends lives there. And um, so you spent I a lot of time. I appreciated his wedding. You did. That's right. Um, can I'll you be there. I'll be there back for VidCon next year. Yeah. So we uh, haven't had any problems there. It's been yeah, pretty no. okay. But again, it is a big tourist place, and there are some nefarious folks there. So there is that. Um, Sun Trever, we are going to Israel later this year. Jeff J, love your content. Do you have any experience traveling from Budapest to Prague? Really want to visit those two. Research has shown booking a train might be tricky. It's not tricky. Um, the thing is, you, you got to just go into the train station and book it that way. Um, I was there this summer. Didn't really have any issues booking trains and stuff like that. You can actually book some of the stuff before you go anyway. Like, look online for some stuff, so you should be okay there. Jeff um, Anderson, five days in Gothenburg, uh, Sweden in late September. We're staying in the area the whole time or hitting the road. I'd hit the road. That's me. Five days is a long time there. I think you could do, like, two and then take the other three days to see some other stuff. I mean, why not? You're there. So I have this one from Jeremy Greenfield, which I'm I'm kind of confused on his comment. How come not many videos of South America? Well, we have videos on Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina. Argentina. Uh, where else? I'm sure there's some other ones too. So yeah. I don't know what you're meaning by. And at least having... three or four videos in all of those countries. Yeah, and some um, like Brazil. I think I have like so 20. So spe specifically Colombia because we just haven't gotten there. We've actually been looking at Colombia um, for next spring. Possibly after Christmas. But, so, um, yeah. So if you want, I and mean, we have videos on like the don'ts of South America, shocks of South America, stuff like that. So just put in, videos. just put in like a name, of, a, like not Colombia or Venezuela or those three on the very top, but other places will pop up. So don't worry. Yeah. We got plenty of stuff on there because I've lived in Brazil. I lived in Argentina. I, I love those places. We just haven't gotten to Colombia yet. Yeah. So sorry. Doesn't mean it's not happening. Yeah. My bad. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a, another big jump here. Uh, and, um. Have you been to Cape Town, South Africa? No, we have not. But we will be getting there eventually. I'm not worried did, about that. Did Michael just, did one just Yeah, there's, oh, we'll go by there in okay. a second. TD95 okay. Productions, just want to say hi. Hi back to you, buddy. <laughs> um, JL Best, let's see. Oh, JL just got back two hours ago. Glad you made it back safely. Um, David Vilches, Orlando is a great airport. I've flown it out there a dozen times with no problems or major delays. Because that's one thing is some airports, they know they have a lot of tourists and there's a lot of tourists coming in and out and they've made they, it so it's a lot easier to flow they through. They tend to be efficient, right? It's not JFK. Um, that's No, that would not be one of them. Do you think that there could be some good tips for inexperienced travelers um, to do if their flights get delayed or worse canceled? My first one is while you're waiting in line to talk to somebody at the counter, you can also be on the phone to them because they may get to you faster. And they'll have more patience on the phone than those people that have been yelled at by the 50 people in front of you. people in front of you, yeah. So, because we've, I mean, I my parents, they they, they had a issue with a flight coming back this summer. And the people that they talked to in the thing were like, oh, just call. We're like, we're here with you. And like, sometimes it's easier just to call and, and kind of separate from the, the crazy situation. Michael Mann, thank you again, buddy, for the Hi, super Michael. chat. His question is, is there a rule of thumb for air travel versus trains in Europe? What is the threshold of pain for duration? And how do you balance that with scenery? So I look at it this way. If I have like two months of traveling, I don't mind go, taking the train and like hopping every off. Every single time. Every single time and going to different places in between. But if I'm kind of like, imagine if I'm going from like Copenhagen down to Greece, little by little I could do that. But I'm not going to do the same thing than going over to Spain. I would just then fly to Spain and then take trains back up that way. But my thing is... You want to use, you don't want to have to double back anytime. If you're pressed for time, I would go with I would go with um, flights. However, within a country, if you're you know if you're like in Berlin, I wouldn't then fly to Frankfurt. Um, yes. I would absolutely take a train. Yeah, because um, because if you think about it, you, you got a minimum hour and a half. Let's say, well, you got to get to the first off. You got to get to the airport. So let's say two hours, hour and a half ahead of time. Hour and a half ahead of time, plus the ha half hour, hour to get to the airport, depending where you got to go. So there's mm -hmm. two and a half hours. Then you got your hour flight. So that's three, four hours, and then you've got to get from that airport. So you got five hours that's going to disappear. So if your train is four, five hours versus a flight, it's, it's an hour and a half flight, but it takes you five hours of a di of all the crap. It might just be easier just to take the train. Yeah, just kind of do, do the numbers. 
work the numbers and, and decide. Let's see. And what's uh, the best transportation options in Antarctica? You can fly Whales. in. No, you, yeah. You, <laughs> Icebergs. I'm yeah. sorry. You can fly in there. Um, if you want to stay, there's actually a place you can fly into and stay there. Or you can take the boats ships. in. But the ships, they'll tell you they don't guarantee that you're actually going to get to land. So that's one of those little things like that. Uh, Scott is heading to Greece. Any last minute advice? Eat, learn. Eat, eat. Eat. I would say learn just a few words of Greek. Um if you know, like I don't understand, please thank you. Um, where is Evaristo? Is thank you. Evaristo. Just know um, that. Barakalo is both um, please and thank you. Yeah, you'll be fine. They'll give you drinks just. They'll for love that. the fact that you're trying. And they'll give you drinks even if you mess up. And they'll yeah. give you drinks because of it. And they'll give you drinks because of it. And probably some more food. And also, and they'll give you drinks. Don't drink Nescafe Frappe after like eleven o'clock because we have the same. That'll be in the morning. Yeah, 11 in the morning. Um, it, because we have a saying, Nescafe, pr frappe today, sleep tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you have it late in the day, you're going to be like, Nye -ye -ye, all night long. So, Centra, Trever, Sen, uh, Sunset River. Now I get it. See, that's what you guys understand. Some of those words all mixed together. You don't realize what it says. I'm glad you, you do watch our, our live feeds. It's really nice to he hear that, okay? Um, let's see, some other ones. Miami is a terrible airport. I have, I I can't disagree with that one. Uh, Josh Parks, thank you again. What does your shirt like translate to? I I would Google it, but I'd rather super chat. <laughs> Geese business. This Thanks, is Josh. <laughs> Geese business is is a is a business school. That's uh, Geese is the last name of the person who, who donated a bunch it. of money to to the Illinois. Wait, where'd it go? The University of Illinois, and now they're the College of Business. There is the Geese College of Business. So that's what it is. So it's not translating anything. It's just um. Hang on. Go sorry. up one. Going places, what are some good family-friendly places and restaurants in D.C. with a 12-year-old? Our kids loved the Ethiopian food, and, and it is It's excellent. good food, too. Like, just that alone makes me want to go to Ethiopia oh, yeah, because yeah. the food was so dang good. And our kids loved it. Um, you know, you can get a lot of vegetarian things. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of meats and things like that, too. So kind of like whatever anybody wants. Um, all right. So I need to... Mark can't move the thingy. Well, I can't. I'll, I'll <laughs> um, all right. So Todd says, what are your top five favorite cities in Europe? Oh, my gosh. Well, cities versus towns. I love Paris. I can't help Paris, that. Paris, Rome. Paris, Rome, Athens. I'm not Mark doesn't love Athens as much as I do, but he's also not half Greek, so there's that. Hence why she doesn't like German food. Um, I I'm, I'm my mother's family Swiss German. That's not German. That's Swiss German. They're different. Whatever. Okay, so whatever. I named I named three. Yeah. I don't, Lisbon. Obviously, yeah, Lisbon. Because we live there. It's a great place. That's where we started our marriage. Hey, and also, I, I, you know, because we can't answer all the questions that are on here, we really appreciate when, when you all answer, answer other people's questions on there, too. And if you want to answer a specific person's question, if you put, like, at and then their name, it might pop up. And you can do that. Because I know some ways it's kind of a tough way to, to get to them. Like, Heidi is going to Greece. Say, hey, what's the best way to travel in Greece? Opa! <laughs> Uh, driving is a little crazy there because, like, well, you think of the two lane road, it's like a nine lane road, so it's a little bit much. So that's only because he's not Greek. The trick with Greek roads, hey, is I'm 100% Greek, right. Greek, <laughs> Greek by marriage. 100% Greek by marriage. Anybody married to a Greek person understands what I'm saying. 100% so, Greek by marriage. Um, uh, in Greece, stay far to the right if you're driving. Um, and if you are going to rent a car in Greece, which quite frankly, I enjoy driving through Greece. Um, although there's a lot of hills and mountains and things like that. So if those kinds of things, if driving like that freaks you out, don't do it. Um, but you need to have an international driver's license to do it. Even if you're half Greek, they don't always let you get one. Um, but drive far, like even have a, have a, um. Maybe on the curb. Not the or curb, not the curb, a but shoulder. The shoulder. shoulder. Like it's okay to cross that line over on the far right. And then people kind of use the, the, there's, okay, two lane roads are really four lane roads. Thank you. I could have made that <laughs> 20 minute tangent done. Thank you. I'm great. Nico. Hey, talk. in Paraguay, my friend, good to see you. We've been to South America many times. I've actually been to Paraguay a few times myself. Um, sadly, I did not get the kids there this 
last summer, not this summer, the summer before 2018. Um, I feel bad we didn't get there. It was one of those like we were just all burned out and it was, we were going to a wedding in Brazil we needed to get to. So sadly didn't make the cut. I'm sorry. But I have been there. I had a really good time in Asuncion. It really like chillaxed time when I was there, but it's been a few years. So there is that. So welcome, welcome. Um, Lucy writes, I have a one hour layover in Dublin. Is that enough time? It depends if you're keep on traveling yeah you should be okay if you hurry through um i don't know if you're coming from the u.s or wherever so they wouldn't sell you a ticket if they can if they can't you can't make it then they have to book you because that's their fault for letting you get a ticket that you can't get to um no we Phil, no we don't ever rent our houses out we just have house guests stay here michelle m thank you very much for the super chat that's very nice of you i appreciate it um so there's Do you that. want to have a laugh Oh, As God. we're having a YouTube live, my mom just It was calls. my mother-in-law called. She's a wonderful woman. She's a wonderful so, woman. She loves her cats. Her cat. And there's other cats. She loves you, too. Oh. Oh, that wasn't even real. It's in my eyeball. You saw it. <laughs> you all saw it. You all witnessed it. But nobody heard it because it wasn't real. <laughs> so anyway, my mom called and she says... Uh, does South, which, which um, terminal does Southwest fly into in St. Louis? Terminal 3. Or terminal C, it's that one by itself. They asked, the them, by they, itself. They asked them if they wanted to come back into the main I terminal. I thought maybe, and maybe Southwest, our people can answer South, that. Because so I don't go there that much. And Southwest like, no, we're good. We, we got this whole just terminal to ourselves. So we have that. Thanks, everybody. So for, yeah. no, you're going to lick me or something. I don't want I your fishy kissing. Your eyeball. It's already in a lot of pain. It doesn't need your slobber. So, oh, God damn. <laughs> well, I told you she'd do that. <laughs> anyway, um, so for C4 Loom, have you ever been to the Outer Hebrides in Scotland? No. Only islands I've been to is Isle of Sky, and then I was just in Shetland Islands, but I haven't been to the Hebrides yet. But I'm sure I'll get there one day. I don't have any family from there, though. If we do, I'm sure I'll get back because my mom's all into that right now. So. I, we, I went with her on a ge, uh, genealogy trip, and it was a really cool time to see our old family homes and stuff, so it was a fun time. Um, Bruno, drive on the Audubon tips. Stay on the right side. No matter how fast you think you're going, someone's going to go faster, so just be ready for that. Yeah. Never pass on the right either. Yeah, yeah, you get in trouble for that one. And, and they'll take, you'll see a flash. That means you're going to get a ticket, my friend. They're sending it to you in the mail. Um, <laughs> 420 Amsterdam. Yes, yes. And he, he no, was, that's not true. You didn't see what he put up there. He did. I saw it. I read it. Meow. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Anywho, Slovenia. We were there this summer. A very good time. Sorry, oh, yeah, it was it, it's working now, but we can't actually stop it going by. So I, we're like, just answer the ones that pop up. Um, thank you, Nick, for the kind words. Um, let's see. What destination has been most difficult for you to get to because of flights, visas, etc.? Hmm. I think. One of the things that was one of the things that you look at in terms of difficulty of getting some places is what airport you want to go from. Like if we want to go from our local airport, like some places we can't get to because they don't have a flight early enough that will get us to a major destination, mm -hmm. a major hub that'll get us out in time, and that could be a problem. So that's why you're like, I don't want to have a 19-hour layover or a 12-hour layover. I think that's one of the things we look at. How about for visas? China was a little difficult to get visas. To. Yeah, the thing is now that was also. Several working. years ago, yeah. and, and you were working, and then Sorry. we were coming along. So. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> what? Nothing. Sarah Phillips is funny. Um, uh, the Balkans. I've been in a couple of places: Croatia, Montenegro, Slovenia. On the Balkans, we're we're talking to a friend of ours, maybe taking an RV and going to see more of the Balkans next summer. Uh, still, it's just really up in the air. Um, anywhere you felt really unsafe when she she hit me in the head? That was. One. <laughs> No. Real. No, no, um, Todd, really. have you ever been in bad turbulence? Oh, heck yes. I threw for, through the rem remnants of a hurricane once, and I thought I was going to die. I mean, I thought I was going to die. And also, um, one time, Denver. So anytime you're over big mountains, it gets kind of like dicey. And I remember one time I was going to Sturgis, and I was flying out of Denver, and all the things opened up. You know, the, the luggage and that was a that was a bit scary so one because i can't pause it right now to see the name but someone asked about um canceled flights and what if you already checked out of your hotel room what you should you do well if your flight is canceled 
Um, and it's not for weather related stuff. They, they have to give you, they're supposed to give you, um, vouchers but make sure you ask at the airport because you can't get it after you leave the airport uh, my mom and i were flying out of indianapolis a couple weeks ago and they canceled it and then like no one said anything at the airport about vouchers or anything like that so we went out there and i, I tweeted to the airline we were with and they're like oh yeah we can't do that but you know you need to get that at the airport they could have helped you i'm like that helps me now when i'm in town with already having a hotel so somebody said my name or somebody said that rome is safer than charles <laughs> Um, yeah, because Rome's Italian and I'm Greek. There you go. <laughs> We're a little crazier. So, so somebody asked, um, it was Micronation of something, and they asked if we had ever been, or if we'd ever heard of Micronation. We've been to several Micronations. Um, actually, we were in uh, Luxembourg this summer. That's not really Well, micro. it's not really Micro. You're looking Vatican, at Monaco, Vatican, Monaco, Monaco, Monaco. Um, uh, with Liechtenstein, in, maybe. That's in, that. in Italy that, you know. Um, oh, San Marino. San been there. Marino. I'm going to go to Andorra later this year. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, can you pull that down just a wee bit more? Uh, maybe please? like two. So. Oh, Harbor's Ferry. What do I know? Oh, um, Harbor's Ferry is absolutely incredible. Just a really beautiful area. All of that is excellent. To, to I don't know what that answer was to, but Harbor's Ferry caught my eye. I've been there and I loved it. Malcolm Hogan, are you going to get flying lessons? No, nope, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, let's see. Oh, but Tony, I don't know. Somebody said something about Tarpon Springs. I don't. Oh, it's Tarpon Springs, where all the Greek, where all the Greeks are. That's why, because they have all the Greek restaurants. And and when we go down to Tampa, we always go to Tarpon Springs and eat Greek food. Yes, so we do. We do our best part. Um, best in in the Netherlands, not including Amsterdam. Utrecht. Harlem. Um, Utrecht. Gruningen's nice as well. There's a lot of nice places around there. Yep. <clears throat> uh, my girlfriend and I are going to the UK for a 10-day trip at the beginning of February next year. Any advice or recommendations that you haven't already touched on on previous videos? So, um, I'm going to just say this, that traveling with um, a significant other can be really difficult. Or, and it can also be really awesome. But take your humor with you. As you can see, we do that all the time. Um, that That's really helpful. And pack light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that makes life easier always. Also, I would um, I would discuss with your friend, like, your budgets and stuff like that before you go. Because sometimes that's where friends mm -hmm. have a dividing of the ways, a parting of the ways of when they, like, their times to travel, like, I mean, I have friends that I enjoy traveling with, but there's some friends I enjoy traveling, but I don't travel with them anymore because their their spending habits are either way more than mine are or they're way less than mine are, and it just causes issues. So you want to make sure you have these conversations beforehand. Now, Pink Pearly Disney Wishes is back. I hate to keep Hi. asking about Brazil, but it's an honest curiosity, the hardest part of traveling to Brazil. To Brazil? Well, actually, there's no visas required anymore, no so you're good there. Anymore. You're so that good. makes life a lot easier. And they had e-visas for a while, which were totally easy, too. Yes, they um, are. That only the toughest part. <clears throat> Let's see. I would say, oh. For me, it wasn't all that difficult. We flew into Sao Paulo and then um, flew up the coast and went to various different places through there. I would say we wanted to get to some off the beaten path sort of places and we needed to hire um, drivers ahead of time. And so maybe that first driver or two was kind of difficult to, to nail down right away. From afar, but once we got that, then it was a lot easier. Yeah, because a lot of times we ended up doing, like in Bahia, we just had a really good taxi driver from the airport. And we're like, hey, yeah. could we hire you for a few days? Can and you just take us around and, sh and show us stuff? And he did. And yeah, he was and we've done really that. Yeah, we've, done that in Brazil. we've done that in Brazil. We've done that in Morocco. We've done a few places now. Yeah. So hey, Can you go up just above hers? There was another one I wanted to answer. Don't, don't, don't nod your head like that, buddy. But make yeah, it use, go up. You have to use two fingers. But I can't. Two fingers like this. See, oh, like what? That. That's there you go. dumb. It's not like mine. Yours does that too. No, it doesn't. I don't even know where it went. Anyway, <sighs> Effie, I was wondering if Memphis is dangerous. Some parts are, um, but you can have still have a good time there. So I have some Memphis videos to put out because we always have a good time when we're there. Dominic, which European city has the best skyline? If you're looking for like skyscraper skylines, you got London and, and Frankfurt. That's about it. But like just seeing buildings, pretty much any historic town would be great to check out. 
Um, J JM Gaming 21, have you ever had a Juicy Lucy in Minneapolis? Yes, I have, and I <laughs> did. And they give you, uh, so those of you who don't know, a Juicy Lucy is a, is a cheeseburger, but instead of the cheese on the outside, the cheese is actually inside the burger, so when you bite into it, it leaks out like Incredible. like like a poached egg. It's so good, but I think I melted my mouth when I did bite, bite into it. Yeah, cut it open first and then eat it. Or nibble and like get some of it out, because otherwise you're just like, you think about like pizza cheese when it's too hot, it melts your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, Ernesto, um, thank you so much for talking so nice as you did for my country of Nicaragua. We highly appreciate it. Blessings for you. Oh, um, we love Nicaragua. Blessings man. for you because, man, that was an excellent, excellent experience for us. We loved yeah. every minute in your country. So thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So Nathan Cartledge, hey, um, what do you think the best Christmas market in Europe is? There's a lot of really good ones out there. Um, I like smaller town ones because you like if you stay in that town you really the whole town comes out to those things yeah i uh, like in the hearts mountains i love going to the hearts mountains Fredlinburg is really nice venegoda is really nice to go to because it just it's Venagoda, a little it was kind, my favorite, like that I it's think. like a small market square and it's often they might have another one there which is really nice yes bomberg yes bomberg is also really it's nice our first christmas together yes that was and we had that is true but what you need to know about the christmas <laughs> markets is a lot of them finish on the 22nd or 23rd because 24th is a holiday and the small towns it's all gone like all the christmas stuff is gone is the 26th only some of the big cities have stuff to go later um i find bavarians it, the farther you go south the more like Christmassy they are, whereas the farther you go north in Germany, the more like fun fair it is. So with rides and stuff like that. But like some good places, Bomberg, Nuremberg is like the capital of it. If you want to do one in France, you go to um, Strasbourg. Prague was nice. There's a lot of good places. Salzburg was fun with the family. So you, you'll be fine a lot of places. Um, so there is that. Have I, Thomas Rangel, have you ever spotted any of these celebrities on your flights? I have never seen anyone ever when I've been traveling. Um, when I've been on on flights, Joss, I saw one time when I was in Vienna going to school, I saw Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. You what? Yes. Hang but, on, I wasn't even paying attention to what you said, and you just said Steven Tyler. Shocking, I... shocking. Have you ever seen celebrities when you've been on planes? Jocelyn has. Yeah. Akon. Oh, oh I saw Akon. It was pretty cool. She saw Akon. There you go. So that's that's all. Okay. Now, see, no really good fun stuff. Pink Pearl about. Disney wishes. My birthday is tomorrow. So cake. It's happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's also Caleb's birthday. Caleb's birthday is tomorrow too. Yeah, big stuff. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Let's see. Um, somebody asked about um how much time to spend in D.C. and a bunch of different stuff. We we always tell you guys D.C. Go look at Trip Hacks DC. Um, yeah, Rob is Rob. incredibly knowledgeable, and he won't steer you wrong. No, he has YouTube. You can say his YouTube channel. Watch some of the stuff there. Get in touch with him. He's a good guy. Um, let's see. They're jumping around on us again. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, how to redu reduce stress when traveling? I think one of the biggest things to reduce stress when you're traveling is prepare before you go. Do your research. And, and sometimes I'm not saying like you need to be like us. Like for me, I'm reading up like the history of the country, the culture of the country. I'm writing to people. I'm talking to my friends from there. I'm trying to find out everything. So it's like a little bit too much, maybe. Um, but you but know, we have, we're doing this for you, so yeah. It's, it's so a little it's, different. it's still different. But I would say is doing a little bit of research. Just like have an idea, of like general with a map. Like have a rough idea. Is like okay, where am I staying? Where are the main sites? And where do I want to go? So you have a rough map, like ideas, like okay, here our hotels here. We want to go general to the south. direction. Like that, yeah. that takes a lot of stress out, so you don't get lost. Also, I always recommend grab a card from the hotel when you check in, because you, you might not speak the language that's there, but I guarantee that business card will tell them where to go, and they can do that. And for me, it's pack light because it, when I. Well, I've never ever packed. I always underpack. But um, packing packing too much stuff just causes so much more stress, like trying to drag all that stuff around with you and things like that. The other thing I would say is learn just a few words of the, of the language. Um, you know, just be polite in, in the language in the country that you're going to. Yeah. Vincat, hey, buddy. We're looking to go to India. We are, like, planning out a future trip. So we'll be getting down there one of these days. Don't you worry. <laughs> Micronation of... Pontonia, it's near Helen or Dahlonega or Atlanta. You're like, <laughs> it's like I'm never from Chicago. That's it's close all enough. Don't around worry. up there. It's like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Dublin. It's like seven hours from Dublin, but it's it's, it's close enough. 
Pasta Punk, thank you very much for the super chat. I turned 20 in September and I've solo traveled to Vancouver, Montreal this year. What country in Europe or elsewhere would you suggest for a solo traveler my age? So, 20, so I'm going to guess not a ton of cash on you, but you want to have meet other people when you're traveling around. Um, Ireland is a good one to do um, because you have a lot of tours you can do that are cheap and a lot of cheap places you can stay as well. And the people are just fun there in general. And I mean, there's all kinds of like college students to go there and stuff like that. So that's a nice thing there. I feel like the uh, South of Spain would... Yeah, I was going to say South of Spain. Yeah. South of Spain is really good too. You can have a good time there. I think those would be two good ones that are good for your budget and good for your cultural knowledge and good for a good time in your heart. So I think that'll be a good one for you. Do so, you have any pro tips for uh, learning German? Oh, um, what, what, what's... Oh, hair, yeah. Hair. Uh, learn German with Hair Antrim. Another buddy of mine, Levi, he's in, from St. Louis um down there and he actually has a really nice channel it's uh learn german with hair antrim and he goes from like if you're advanced or middle or nothing he's got all kinds of stuff on there he's got worksheets he's got all kinds of stuff so i would i would check him out so just look up hair antrim a-n-t-r-i-m on uh Ryan, on youtube and it'll pop up hold still how did how do strollers do in spain especially the avenue the trains and walking streets, trains and walking streets. Uh, it's it's doable you're fine and you know what and but take a not the big giant strollers like we have in the U.S. If you have like an umbrella stroller that you can pick up if need be um, with your child in it, that one is um, that's really easy. All right, so let's see. Just having to ban some people for being naughty. Um, okay, so someone asked about Kansas City for tomorrow. Have a good trip. Um, you're gonna need a lot of barbecue there. One thing I would say is. What you don't realize is Kansas City is very long. It's like very spread out in one way. So you'll spend a lot of money on, on Uber. So pick out areas to go to and focus on that area instead of like going to a lot of different places. Um, but like the, the World War One Museum that's there is really nice. I actually like the, the Negro League Baseball Museum that's there is one of the best modern museums out there. Not a lot of people go to it. So please go and support it so it stays open. But it, it's really, really yeah, cool. Absolutely. Sylvia's back. Hey, buddy. Um, do you regret any trip? Where wouldn't you go back? The only trips I regret are the ones when I don't go with my family because I'm usually like, on the flight out, like, I miss you. <laughs> I wish you guys were here. Yeah. A few days in, I'm okay. I, that, that's my that's my big thing. Um, Where wouldn't you go back? You know, I know it sounds crazy, but, like, I don't need to go back to Luxembourg, except that we have friends there. Yeah, true. I feel like I saw everything. Well, we could have seen some more trees and hills and uh, a few castles. You know, castles, maybe, but, yeah. but, like, you know, I feel like I have, I got a good dose of it. And other than the fact that we have friends, I don't have to go back. But it's not like... I wouldn't go back. I just don't have to go back. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So Pink Pearl Disney Wishes. Trying to learn Portuguese, good. And you're having a tough time finding explain. stuff in Portuguese. If you have Netflix, you can actually go into settings and change the language. And if it's a Netflix original, most of the time they will have Portuguese because Netflix in Brazil is a big thing. So they're going to make sure they have all their original series will be in those other languages too. So, so you, that might be something to look when out. When we for. lived in Lisbon, that was my big thing: is that I would I would watch television in Portuguese and read the subtitles, and that helped me so much. So, hey, Antonio in Vancouver, good to hear from you. Uh, favorite Caribbean island? We haven't been to a lot of them so far. It'll be Jamaica. We had a great time oh, there. Jamaica. Um, we see like one question: Have you been to Trinidad and Tobago? No, I have not been yet. Sadly, we will get there though. I've uh, one of my colleagues is from there, and he always talks so highly of it, and his pictures look so nice. Uh, the Very Lazy Travelers. We love trying local food, but is there something that you or Jocelyn just won't try? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm not a huge fan of organ meat, but I'll eat it, especially if I'm at someone's table. Like if I'm in someone's home, there's almost nothing they serve me. Um, anything in uncooked blood is not going between these lips. It's not happening. Um, but that's... Yeah. Oh, Jose. Hi. Hola. Oh, hey, buddy. It's been a while. That's right. It has been a while, Jose. Gosh, Good to see has. you, buddy. Nice to see you. Nice. See, so, this is why we do YouTube live. You see, like Jose is back and like, oh, my buddy. Awesome. Let's see. There's another one. I another friend of ours is on here. Where'd it go? Underappreciated countries. Nicaragua. Nicaragua. I think is very underappreciated. I think Port I Portugal's not as underappreciated as it used to be. Now, now it's getting the Rwanda. Right thing. Rwanda, definitely Rwanda. Tanz even Tanzania itself too, yeah. but there's even more so. Uh -huh. um, hey, Juan in, in Puerto Rico, good to see you, buddy. Uh, I think that um, I think that uh, Uruguay. 
That's yeah. another one. People mm. don't really go there. If they do, they just pop over to and Colonia for the day to Colonia, and, go back and they don't hours. see the rest of it. And um, people are really great. We had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, Whoa, somebody's driving from Germany to Athens. I don't know where that went and drive. zipped through. That's that's a huge drive. God bless you. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Stephen in Mexico. Good to see you, buddy. Um, let's see. Let's get a, We're going to get a few more questions because... We have to prepare Caleb's birthday surprises because it's his birthday in the morning. So we've got our <laughs> we've got our stuff, and I don't want to tell him what's going to happen because I'm sure some of his friends are watching and reading this. I don't want them to ruin the surprise, David. Anyway, um. <laughs> I am a, f- a food neophobe and don't eat new foods. Is eating such a big part of travel that it would be a significant problem? And do many foreign places serve simple food? You can find simple yeah. food in most places, and you know what? There's there's McDonald's on almost every country in the world. Yeah. I mean, it, fast food is fast food, and so if that's what you can go to, whatever. But Or if it's simple food you want, remember, one of the best cultural experiences you can have in different countries is actually going to the market and seeing how they shop and they eat. And you'll find a lot of stuff that you eat at home, too, want. so you'll be okay there. Absolutely. So, so the, the train asks, could I drive from Miami to L.A.? You can, but it's going to take you a few days. Just so you know. At least. I mean, if you drove straight through and only stopped for gas and to sleep, it would still take you three to four days. So some, Minimum. So someone just asked, uh, Wanda Rum, have you been to Egypt? There's more parts of the question, but it went by. Have you been to Egypt yet? No, we haven't, but we're looking to go into a trip maybe this next summer. Yes. Uh, it'll be a little hot, obviously, but I think it'll be well worth it. So there is that. Um, General Patton, yes, we'll be going to India. Don't you worry about that. Um, let's see. All right. Let's see. Last last couple last couple on here. Grocery stores are always good. Yes. They're always cheap, and, but that is and true. And they're also a wonderful cultural experience. It's something different. Yep. Yep. So I am going. To, I'm getting tired because I'm still adjusting from jet lag. Oh, Jose. Okay, Jose Brada. Five for the five of beat down we got last week. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> singing it. Oh, Jose, you're kind. Oh, Thank thanks, you. buddy. Nikos, we have not been in Nepal yet, but we're looking at doing a Bhutan trip next year or the year after. I really want to go and to Bhutan. We, if we do the Bhutan, we will definitely Absolutely. do Nepal we as well. So Nepal. it's and we're trying to figure out because we're trying to get some of these more di- ex- exotic places, but out of the way di- places a lot of people go to. Um, sometimes it's just tough to schedule with the kids and stuff. So that's one of the things. Cause like a place like Nepal, Bhutan, like I, I want to take the kids, definitely see that. Like we went to Turks and Caicos by ourselves, you know, going to a beach and like sitting at the, but like it's going to be crazy, awesome culture stuff. I want the kids to be there too. So it's sometimes it's tough to. Antonio you know. Montana said, I asked you about driving an RV from Germany to Athens. Any advice? Oh, lots of Germans do it. The wow, tolls, the toll. Do. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons of Germans tolls that do it. Are... Yeah, the tolls will add up. I'll just letting you know on that one. So have plenty but of cash. But you know what? Pay. What an amazing trip that would be. I'm a huge fan of RVs, and I did that as a kid, and I absolutely loved it. And you would see so much. Um, however, I'm going to say this. Once you get to Athens, you're going to have to ditch that thing outside the city because there's no way you're getting into any of the the historic area yeah. um, that's not happening in an RV. Yeah. Okay. So since we've got our buddy Jose stop by, we, I think we can call it a night for tonight. Our behavior to cut you preferred chance. Mexican beers, Tosh. Oh, Tosh is on here. Hey, well, I gotta Tosh. stay on now. Tosh is here. Uh, he knew that. They knew. He's like, hey. Slipping in at the end. Like, actually, so my dad used to work in Mexico uh, for years and years and years. And so we'd go down there. Like, this is all we would drink when we were down there. And he'd tell me, like, this is what you will drink because this is what my buddies, my 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 coworkers down here drink. So you will drink Tecate. And so that's that, that's where I started drinking Tecate when I was like. Maybe under, well, I was definitely under twenty one when that happened, um, but uh, when I was, it was Mexican, it was it was legal there, so who cares? Um, so that's where I started drinking tecate a lot, and then Bohemia. I just like the taste of Bohemia. That one more grew on me out over the years. So, yeah, so there is that. Thanks, Tosh, for bringing that up, buddy. Appreciate you being on here. Um, and somebody asked, "Is Europe more quiet? Europeans are more quiet than we loud Americans, except in Italy. Italians can be quite boisterous." Yes. But they're fun. But, and they're so happy with it. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> so it is Greece a good time. can be that way, too. Oh, Alyssa, have fun on your first trip to Germany. I hope our videos can help you out. we got plenty of stuff out there. Um, 
Let's see what else going. Oh, coming to Qatar or Qatar? That mo modalaji. Uh, do I say Qatar or Qatar? Because I hear both, and so I'm not really sure which one to do. And we have thought about going there before the 2022 World Cup to give advice for tourists that are going to go there, so they can be more prepared. And I know some people um, have some. There's some issues that people have with the construction, the, the facilities there, and stuff like that. But we want to make sure that the, the tourists that do go there are better prepared, so they can enjoy the culture and all the stuff that are there. And so we're going to try to help people out that way. Um, other things to talk about. I want to get a SIM card in Germany <clears throat> that will be useful in the rest of Europe. Actually, now they don't they don't charge your roaming stuff fees anymore. Insane. Um, on, on in Europe for European ships and stuff like that, so you'll be okay. You just got to make sure it's something you can t load up online. Michael. So you don't have to go someplace to load up, so you have that. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael Mon, I married an Italian and can attest to that. <laughs> yes. So oh, we all okay. have our crosses to bear. What are you implying, I, You have to be living with me. I mean, that got to suck sometimes. sometimes. So... Travis Reeves and Love and Hate video of Russia. We have a, we have one that's kind of, we combine Love and Hate of Russia with Love and Hate of St. Petersburg and some Don'ts of Russia. So there's some stuff to help you out there. <laughs> Bruno um, Shankman. Switching the knife and fork between hands is a telltale sign of American, not just Americans. Um, other places that don't want to look like they're shoveling food in their mouth. I don't switch forks. Do I no. look like I'm shoveling? No, you here? don't. I'm, I was making a joke. Mm -hmm. for One of the people on here, that was for a joke for someone that was oh, watching. Was. Okay. So... There's that, yeah, no, that, that's one of the things. And it's funny because I lived 12 years over there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, so much effort to switch. Mm -hmm. um, um, which, who knows? There's I've that. never done that. I think I've always held my fork in my left hand and my knife in my right. Actually, I can't even eat eggs without that. I have to have the two. It's weird. No, okay. it could be worse. I mean, you could eat mac and cheese with hot sauce. Mac and cheese with hot sauce is excellent. Yeah, yeah we don't yeah. need to bring that up every time. That's true, we don't. But yeah. I just wanted to, for those those hardcore people. Anyway, all right, okay. we're all doing well. We got to get going because we got to get the kids gotta, to bed and stuff like that. Because for, for those of you that have kids, you know how it is the week before school starts and trying to get them to bed and start and then getting have used a to birthday, routine. A big birthday. A big birthday. He's going to be a teenager now. 13. So, so, so all of you that have been watching this for a long time, he started out in the videos very, very small, and now he's yeah, not so he small anymore. He was three anymore. when we started this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, he was two when I when I started this. He was two. But, but when he started being, it was three. Yeah, he yeah, wasn't really so, in there until he was three. Yeah, so. Oh, my gosh. So, y'all just, we have a teenager tomorrow. Pray for us. <laughs> But he's a good okay. kid, so it's all good. I anyway, wanna, yeah. anyway, wish you all the best. Thank you, everybody, for taking part in our super chat today. Or our super Mac chat and today. cheese with ketchup. Oh, on that note, we got to go, yo. That's <laughs> gross. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for the super chats and all the questions we had today. It really makes Thanks. a difference. We can get on here and help, get, just help other travelers out. It's a really wonderful experience to get to talk to some of you, see some of you again, like our buddy Michael and Tosh and Bruno Jose. and everybody. And Jose, it was of course. So good to see y'all. So good to see y'all, Rebecca. Thank, thank you. you so much, Antonio. Good to see you out there, buddy. Cab, Nathan. Oh, hey, Donna. Pat, General Pat and Donna. Where's Donna? <laughs> oh, Donna's lurking. Oh, Donna's lurking. There's that. <laughs> and all of our friends that are watching, they don't tell us. Also, oh, somebody was asking about when when they could see us and do stuff. So we've started to do. Um, talks actually at public libraries and stuff like that where we travel to we always offer free talks to the local libraries where we're going so we might be at a local library eventually nearby if we're traveling by in that area so if you hear us talking about a place we're going to go we might be there so we'll, we'll announce those when we yeah, do we'll have those yeah we'll put those up on our website on waltersworld.com mm -hmm. um, probably so, I, I guess you can do that in the community bit yeah as well YouTube so we'll be there too, too so where so. you see these now so, so we'll have those things um, there's yep. something else I was going to say oh um, Your wife's wonderful. My wife is wonderful, and I think the my end of the end, the end of this month, a bunch of people had asked about new new Walters World shirts and merchandise and stuff like that. We're shooting for the end of this month or the beginning of September to have a new bunch, like a two week window with new merchandise to offer. So if you're looking for shirts or quarter zips or beer koozies or stickers or whatever, hopefully we're gonna have some other fun stuff there too as well. So we will have some other things. So Francis, oh. I'm glad you can make it. I'm sad that we're gonna be done though, but we wish you all the best and thanks everybody and my batter just told me um it's going to die so i guess that's where we'll leave it from there Alinita. all the best bye. <laughs> bye everybody thank you everybody bye